And you know what will give you hope in this world when life sucks because life is going to suck? It's when you believe in the promises of God's Word and you truly see Christ as the main character throughout and you see where the storyline is going. Your hope comes in the second coming of Jesus. In Luke chapter 24, which is one of my favorite stories, it's a story of the two disciples walking to Emmaus. <clears throat> this is after Jesus has died and resurrected. If you look in Luke 24, you notice there's going to be an interesting language that these two disciples talk about. When Jesus first appears to them, he asked them, you know, what's wrong? And they stood, you know, because they are looking sad. In verse 18, one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these, these days? It's like, hello, have you not been around? You know what just happened? The man that we thought was the Jewish Messiah has just died, right? Like, are you an alien? That's the implication. And he said to them, what things? Jesus is playing along. What happened? What things are you talking about? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. And then look at what they say in verse 21. That tells you why they are so disappointed. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. In other words, we hoped he was the head crusher we've been waiting for. And they just killed him. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Why are they saying that? Because Jesus always mentioned he would be crucified in the what? On the third day. They're like, and it's the third day and he's not here. Do you see the comedy in this? They're literally talking to Jesus and they don't see him. It's been the third day. He all kept talking about the third day and he's not here. This whole, we thought he was a head crusher. He kept quoting Isaiah saying he's the Messiah. He was the one that was supposed to redeem Israel and it's not happening. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and when they did not find his body, they came back to, uh, that they had seen, even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Now, why are they saying that? They're not saying that because they believe the woman's testimony because they're sad. They said, we had hoped, past tense. They're saying, and there's a bunch of crazy women saying that they, that's the idea. And people are saying, they, you know, he's at the tomb, had a vision of angels. Who buys that? Do you see that? Because if they really believe the woman's testimony, they wouldn't be sad because they, that means they would have believed that Jesus resurrected. So these two disciples are not, you know, they think, yeah, Jesus said he was going to resurrect. The woman said, yeah, there was no body there. But it's almost as if they're saying, yeah, but we hoped and none of our hopes are coming true. Verse 25. So what does Jesus say to them? Oh, foolish one is slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. That's the Old Testament prophetic writing. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses, which refers to the first five books of the Old Testament, and all the prophets, which is the rest of the Old Testament, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. They drew near to the village where they were going because they're on the road to Emmaus. They're going to Emmaus. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us for it is towards evening and the day is now far spent, right? It's getting dark. So he went in and stayed with them. Then he had a meal with them. He was at the table with them. He took the bread and blessed it and broke it and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were open and they finally saw who they were talking to this whole time. And then he vanished. This tells us, by the way, something about a resurrection body. It is still a physical body, but it's different from our physical body because it can do things that our physical body cannot do. Transcend space and time. Jesus appears in the locked room and disappears. Right? So in the kingdom, I don't think we're going to need a bunch of Teslas and cars. We can just, I want to go to Jerusalem. Awesome. I want to go to New Italy. There I am. I want to go to New Nova Scotia, whatever, right? Anyways, side note. Why do I say that? Because Paul said Jesus' resurrection is the first fruit of our resurrection. Whatever Jesus' body shows us, it shows us a preview of our body to come. So they saw him disappear, and then what happened? They said, did not our hurts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us in Scripture? What was burning in their hearts? They said previously, we had hoped. And then he opened up the scriptures about everything that the head crush had to go through. And then now they have what? Hope. They have hope. And when Jesus disappears, now they're waiting for what? He's going to return. And that's our hope today. We're not hoping for the head crusher to come. He's already come. We're hoping for him to return and finish the restoration process. And you know what will give you hope in this world when life sucks 
because life is going to suck is when you believe in the promises of God's Word and you truly see Christ as the main character throughout and you see where the storyline is going, your hope comes in the second coming of Jesus. That is our hope. There is no justice in this world. There are kids being murdered. There are genocide happening, but we say hope is still on the way because Jesus is coming back and he's going to make all things right and every person will be judged according to their sins. You guys might have gone through a lot of problems in your life where you had to say prematurely bye to people that you love because of disease and death. Jesus is coming where death will be no more and you will never have to say goodbye again. Some of you are in horrible relationships where all it is you're feeling attacked and there's never any peace. Jesus is coming one day where all relationships will be restored and there will be peace forever because he is a Prince of Peace. Every single thing you're going through today points to the future hope that we could cling on to with Jesus' second return. That's the only hope we have. It's what the Old Testament saints had. Who is the head crusher? Now, we don't say who is the head crusher. We know who the head crusher is. What we say now is head crusher return one day, please. Come, Lord Jesus. Just end it. Just end the story. It's getting long. And I hate how horrible this life is. But you know why Jesus hasn't returned yet? He's giving people time to respond. And so your goal is not to just huddle up into a holy huddle. Take us now. How are unbelievers going to hear the gospel through the church? That's the only reason why you're alive. The only reason why you're still alive and God has a, is not done with you is because there are still people who need to hear the gospel. And some of us have forgotten the purpose of our lives because we're so consumed with, let me find a meaningful life in this broken world. We're trying to build a tent inside an airport when we don't realize we're leaving the airport. What are you doing? Go tell everybody about the head crusher. Every single person in your life. But what if they don't like me? I don't care if they don't like you. Time is short, tell them. They'll love you if they listen and they see you in the kingdom. But my reputation, who cares about your reputation? No one's going to remember you 2,000 years. Tell them about Jesus. Oh, but it has to, i got to wait till I know more. What else do you need to know? Do you know Jesus? Yes. Okay, that's enough to tell people about someone you know. But, but, but once my kids go to college and I go, what if that time never comes? Don't ever fall in that trap of you can always do it later because you don't know if you do it later. The time is now to do the things God has called you to do. And you will never fully be passionate about the things that God has called you to do until you get the main message of the Bible. God is restoring all things and he has given this message of restoration, this precious message into the hands of the church. And he has told you in Matthew 28, go tell every single tribe, tongue, and nation until you're dead. 